So a couple months ago, I think it was in October or November. I don't know if it's October or November. Uh, my husband and I were driving to pick our daughter up from school and we get to this intersection we go through all the time and we happen to get there literally moments after a really big accident happened. And so we're driving this way. The accident is coming this way. It's at this big intersection, like a huge intersection. This way has three lanes. This way has three lanes. This way has two lanes. And this way has two lanes. And right here in this direction, which I don't know if it's north, south, east or west. I have no idea, honestly. There was a golf cart that got t-boned now where we live in florida it's super touristy so there's golf carts all over the friggin' place all the houses that you can rent here all the townhomes the uh the condos the houses one of the selling points is oh we've got a, a golf cart you can use while you're here on vacation you know a golf cart that seats four or six or eight like there's like limo golf carts like these things are freaking massive right so the thing with the golf carts though they're not allowed on the main road. They can't use the three lanes this way or the three lanes this way, but they can use these two lanes here as long as the speed limit is not over. I don't know if it's 30 or 35. I think it is 35. So a lot of the golf carts use the, the back roads and go down by the water and things like that. And then they cross over the 45 mile an hour road to get to the other side. You know, why did the golf cart cross the road to get to the side with the, the grocery stores and Starbucks and things like that on it. So over here you have the houses and the condos and the beach. Here you have that main highway and here you have everything that you need while you're on vacation. The, again, the, the restaurants, the grocery store, Starbucks, the liquor store, the fun things to do and the touristy locations are all on this side of this main highway, right? And so you see them all the time, these golf carts that are crossing over this, this busy intersection because they, they cross in the pedestrian crosswalk. It gives you plenty of time to get from point A to point B, which is, you know, the touristy side to the, to the necessary side, right? And so we just happened to show up at a time where the golf cart that was going through, unfortunately did not make it all the way across, but through no fault of their own. When we got there, we had no idea what had happened. All we saw was a golf cart, which had been kind of knocked over. It was, it was leaning. It wasn't even fully on its side and a red Jeep that had slammed into the side of it. So you have to pick, pick, picture that the golf cart is crossing from this side to this side and there's a red jeep coming this way and it has hit this golf cart that's all we know we don't know how it happened what happened whatever else but what we could see was a female that got thrown or flung i don't know what the right word knocked out of this uh golf cart just curled up on the ground and there was a man right next to the golf cart okay and then you had uh, two police officers that had already shown up. There was a female police officer on the ground that was attending to the woman. There was another police officer that was attending to the man. And you had plenty of uh, onlookers, people who either saw the accident or wanted to stop and see what was happening. So you had people standing on the sidewalks. You had cars that were kind of blocking the rest of this direction. And then the people trying to go this direction were trying to figure out how to go around because they still wanted to get through and not back up traffic or whatever else. And we just happened to get there at a red light and we had time to sit there and look at what was happening. And I remember it was one of those things where you see it and you're like, I don't know if that woman's dead. I don't know if the man is dead because nobody's moving. But the way the police were moving around didn't seem like there was anybody was dead. It just seemed like people were hurt, right? And I had no idea what the red Jeep was about, except for it had T-boned this uh, golf cart. But I could see a younger individual near the red Jeep. And that's all I could see at that time. So we have to keep going and we get up and we're, we're driving and we get to a red light later and we're in this, this lane and this girl pulls up in this lane and her and I are both like this at the exact same time, which means she had gone through that accident also and was having the same thoughts I did of, I hope those people are okay. That's horrific. I can't believe that happened, you know, whatever. So we get the kid from school and we're headed back. And we have to go through this um, whole back way because the roads are now closed down. They're bringing in a life flight, the helicopter to come get the people. And that's the last thing that we knew was that th this is what I have found out since then, because I've been trying to keep up with it since November. Because when you see something like that, you want to know exactly what happened, not because you're nosy, but because you, you feel invested in what has happened to these people because you, you saw them in their most uh, uh, horrific, vulnerable state. And so you want to make sure they're okay right? So I'm a uh, part of a lot of different pages on Facebook that have to do with my community and my city and where I live. So I can kind of keep up with what's going on, whether it's good, bad, ugly, whatever, right? 
And so a lot of people were posting on Facebook about this accident. And so every once in a while, people were like, hey, just checking in. Does anybody know what's happening? Whatever else. Well, we, fig we found out um, a little bit before Christmas that what, ha what had happened was, unfortunately, the red Jeep that T-boned this golf cart was a 16-year-old kid with two of his friends in the Jeep. And the, the driver was texting and they were talking and, you know, not paying attention. And the kid ran the red light. He was going full speed, 45 miles an hour on that road, when he slammed into the side of that uh, golf cart that was legally crossing the road during its time in the pedestrian crosswalk to cross over um, onto either the sidewalk or the main street on the other side. They had the green light, basically. They were doing absolutely nothing wrong. And it's one of those things of, if it hadn't been the golf cart, what if it had been a person walking through the intersection? What if it had been another car that had a child in it? Something like that. And I've seen so many golf carts around here that put kids in the back of the golf cart with no seat belts on it. We saw ones where they had children in um, baby seats on these golf carts crossing the six lane highway. And to me, that's horrible. If you need to go from point A to point B, g use your car. I mean, I know that the golf cart is convenient and it's nice out and you want to be able to use it because you're on vacation, but things like that scare the crap out of me. And I would much rather have four walls around me. Is that how that works? Walls and a roof whatever. I'd rather have be inside a vehicle, like a vehicle with doors when crossing major intersections like that. The people that got hit, they airlifted both of them to a hospital. And they said in the beginning that the woman had the worst of the injury. She was literally knocked or flung or thrown uh, 60 feet away from the, the golf cart. The man was right, on, and which is so crazy to me because according to you know the police report that, or li at least as much as they gave information on, the man was driving the golf cart and the woman was the passenger and they're going this way. Yet the car that hit them, the man fell out here like on the side, but it pushed the woman 60, 60 feet away, 60, 60 feet, not 60 yards, 60 feet away. So she got the brunt of it because she was closest to the Jeep. And I guess her, her momentum is what knocked the man out. And then she went farther. So they said in the beginning that she had the worst of the injuries, which seems realistic because of the, being on the side that the Jeep hit, right? Well, it turns out that unfortunately, um, this couple, they were an older couple that had a home here. They, they were retired and they were here to just relax and spend a little bit of time. Normally they come here with their kids and, and things like that, but this time they came just by themselves. And if I'm remembering that part correctly, I'm pretty sure I am. Um, unfortunately the, the, well, fortunately the lady survived, you know, and is, um, recovering, but unfortunately the man died. The man who was driving the golf cart, it, died. And I, my brain is thinking, you know, when we drove by, was he alive or was he not? Cause when they airlifted him, uh, everybody was saying, Oh, they're both being airlifted and in, in, in critical condition. But what if he had already passed and nobody knew and you're driving by, but at the same time, it sucks. Cause here you are, this couple that's just living your life, trying to just do fun things together, take a nice little like jaunt. That's not the right word. Nice little drive, if you will, from where you're staying over to the grocery store or Starbucks or where, I don't even know where they were going. It was one of the two, it's something over there to go hang out or get groceries or get coffee or whatever. And then out of nowhere, because somebody's not paying attention, one of you has lost your life and the other one's life will never, ever be the same. But then at the same time, you have this 16 year old kid who now his life will never be the same. He has to live with the fact that because of the way he was driving, he took somebody's life. He took somebody's husband. He took somebody's father. He took somebody's son. And that is on him for his lack of maturity behind the wheel and his lack of accountability behind the wheel. And it makes me as an adult now, when I turned 16 and I was so ready to go drive and I could, I already know my mom was probably like, Oh, this is such a horrible idea. It's before cell phones were the way they are now before you could track somebody with like life 360 or find my phone or whatever else you had to trust that your kid was going to drive safely and not ride with morons and pay attention to what they were doing and go to the places they said they were going and do the things they said they were going to be doing and not do a bunch of really dumb stuff. Now we have, 
apps. You can track everything. I can track my kid walking from her bedroom to the kitchen if I wanted to and see her steps. So yeah, that might make me a helicopter parent, but after the things we've seen in today's society, I'm going to know where she is at all times, 100%. But it gives me pause because at 16, she's allowed to drive. And it's not that I don't trust my kid behind the wheel. I don't trust other people behind the wheel. Like 16 or not, uh, people suck <laughs> behind the wheel. Too many people are distracted drivers. I was telling Kevin, that my husband, we were talking about it. Y'all know who Kevin is. We were talking about it. I was like, a lot of people don't realize that when they take a phone call in the car, whether they're holding their phone, which you shouldn't, most places are hands-free now, or it's through you know Bluetooth, a lot of people forget to pay attention to how they're driving while they're talking on the phone. They end up going way below the speed limit or way above the speed limit. They end up missing their turn or going too far or whatever else because you're so distracted just from that conversation that you're having. And that's what I worry about the most for my kid when she's old enough to drive is that she's going to herself not be distracted possibly while behind the wheel, but her friends in the car with her may distract her or that she may ride with somebody who's going to be a distracted driver. And that's my daughter's life in their hands. You just never know what's going to happen. So I've always had this thing of, we do not go to bed angry. We do not part ways without saying, I love you. I don't care what it is, where we are, who you're around. If my kid, I'm dropping her off at school, I say, I love you. If she doesn't say it back immediately, I'll roll down that window and yell it. So she knows we never part ways without saying, I love you. And if she wants to be unembarrassed, she says it uh, before she gets all the way out of the car. The man and I never go to sleep angry at each other. And even if we are angry, it's still a, I love you. Because what if one of us doesn't wake up? What I tell my kid all the time, not all the time, because that sounds awful. But I do tell her the things that you say to people, make sure the last thing you say to somebody is something you want them to remember you for, or that you're okay with those the last words you say to somebody, whether it's friends, family, a stranger, it doesn't matter because you just never know what could happen at any point in time, any point in time. Nobody expects to be in a car accident. Nobody expects to die. Nobody expects to be hurt. Nobody expects any of these things. And yet it happens all the time. So my whole thing is the older I get, the more I try to be cognizant of my tone with people, the things I say to people, the way I treat people, the way I am behind the wheel and paying attention to how other people are behind the wheel. Or even if I'm just walking places, I'm very more aware of what's going on around me as I get older, because I feel like as I get older, I notice how many more people are not aware of what they are doing or what's going on around them. And then you end up in situations where a nice couple were just trying to go from this side of the road to that side of the road and a distracted teenager took one of their lives. Like you just never know. So just always pay attention to what you're doing and always tell the people you love that you love them. Even, even if you don't know somebody say something nice, cause you just never know if that's the last thing they're going to hear that day, or that's the last thing you're going to say that day. And I know that sounds morbid and whatever else, but it's an important message. It's an important conversation to have. Um, cause I think a lot of times people don't have those kind of conversations because it's deemed sad or morbid or whatever else. We need to have all kinds of conversations to make sure that we all think about the things that need to be thought about. So that's that. Hey, thanks for letting me uh, tell you about the story. I'm, I'm still trying to keep up with what's going on. The 16 year old, if, if I, I don't know, is there, I mean, it's vehicular manslaughter at that point. Does that mean that this 16 year old has now completely ended his own life by going to jail for the remainder or is it because he's 16? Does he get a slap on the wrist? Like, how does this work? So I've been trying to keep up with that too. And once I know the answer, I'll let you guys know if you're interested, I can do like an update or, you know, edit this to add like a pinned comment or something. Um, but it's just a horrible thing. And I never want my kid to have something like that on her conscience. I never want something bad to happen to somebody because of her or uh, anything like that. So just things to talk about with your kids, with your family, with, you know, people that you care about and that matter to you, just as a reminder that anything could happen to anyone anytime. So make sure that you do your best to be as cognizant of what's going on around you and to always leave people feeling good and happy and loved because I think it's extremely important. So that's all. I love you guys. Thank you for letting me have this conversation with you. Hope you have a fabulous day. Bye.